Hey, I'm Christian Metis, and you're in my studio with AllAccess.com. Hey guys, I am here with Christian Metis, and you are, I mean, your portfolio, let's just start with Lovely, the band, and uh, Broken, the number one song that hit media base for Hot AC Radio. Mm -hmm. you, you were a co-writer, co-producer on the album, Finding It Hard to Smile. Why do you think Broken literally broke the record? Uh -huh. <laughs> I think, I mean, it's a good question because we never expected it to do as well as it did. Um, but I think a big part of it was, I mean, the lyrical content in it, you know. I think a lot of people relate to that song, yeah. you know. Um, just dealing with anxieties and that's what a, a large part of the whole project is about and that song specifically. I think a lot of people resonated with that. And it's just like a cool, upbeat song that people can relate to and they can, you know, Dance. Yeah, da yeah, yeah, and you were the producer on that song, so like, where was the inspiration for that? Because you're talking about anxiety, but it's also upbeat. Sure, yeah. I know. I when we were writing it, I remember Mitch came in with like a guitar part and he started playing it, and then I started to like just make a drum pattern yeah. out of it, and uh, from there it just kind of built. It was because it was really just the guitar part and the drum part, and then the rest is built around it. Yeah. So. It's funny because I still have the voice note of it, and we were listening back to it the other day, and uh, it was just really funny, some of the bad ideas, especially the lyrical ideas that came out of us when we were writing that song. So. And how does your like thought process go? Like, Because you're writing it, right? You're writing the song, and then you're putting the music together, and then you're like, man, cut that lyric out. Like, I mean, it's a feel thing, you know? Oh, okay. Like, you know when, when something's bright. I, I, cause, like I said, going back to that voice note, I, there was a moment yeah. in there where I'm like, that's the lyric. That's it. Yeah. And then we were just spitting out garbage, <laughs> nonstop. And, and then we had another lyric. Yeah. That's awesome. Let's let's use that. And that was kind of like how how it built up. But I think that's experience. Like after a while, you, you tend to weed out and figure out what's good and what's bad, and, and that's kind of how how it happens. Do you think, especially as a songwriter, do you think that you relate a lot to all the songs you've written to written um, about? Not always, um, but. I think it's important for whoever's singing it to, yeah. to relate to it. But me personally, not necessarily, but I'm, I'm kind of here to help them, so. And um, you also have the next single, which was These Are My Friends, which was top 40 on Media Base for alternative rock. Yeah, top 10. Rock. Yeah. Uh, yes, top 10. You know, what, what, what about that? That was another second, uh, you know, record on the album. That was another one where Mitch came in with the lyric and it was like super, it's a super simple lyric. So, yeah. and I just thought that could be like something really big. And it, I love the simplistic nature of it. Mm -hmm. And it was just like a matter of how are we going to turn this into like an actual song? And we kind of made it about, you know, the, the thoughts going on in your head and it kind of, okay, this makes sense. And it just kind of fell into place, so. And how did you think about from Broken, which was so big and you didn't think it was going to be as, no, <laughs> as big. No, definitely not. Is there a song that you thought, man, this is gonna be like the biggest hit in radio? I, I, I mean. Cause you wrote the album, so yeah, I mean. There's nothing, I, I mean, there's wishful thinking, but like. Is there one, can you like, that you were like, okay, this, Guys, this it's this one. I mean, I I guess broken because it was the first single. That's what everyone. <laughs> yeah, that's what everyone thought. Yeah. So. so you were, I guess, I guess you were on the right track then. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but I think it's hard to say what's going to be a big hit because you, yeah. you just don't know what people are gonna. I know, but you always have with. you connect with probably one of the songs. Well, I, I do have favorites. Yeah. But not necessarily that I think are going to be big hits. Um, like the one, actually, there was one that's just started going to radio. Maybe I'm afraid. Yes. Um, and that literally has just started. That is my favorite, and I hope it does well. <laughs> you never know, <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, we'll see. That was yours, and that hasn't hit yet. I mean, besides. I mean, it just started charting right now, so so. We're, we're hoping, right? I mean, broken, broken, still top ten. I know. Time, so. It's great. It's just going and going, it you know. That's die. and that's music, though, yeah. because you're reaching other people that can also relate yeah. to the song. Um, and then you know you've also Grammys. Grammys happening this weekend, and right. um, you worked with Pink yep. on her album "Beautiful Trauma," the song "I Am Here," mm -hmm. and it's Grammy nominated. What yeah. was? Did you sit with Pink? What? How was that? Yeah. So how did it you was, write that uh, song? 
it was me and uh, my, my co-writer and co-producer, Billy, we spent a week in uh, Venice in this little, uh, this little studio. It was like some, some guy's house. It was super random. It was, she doesn't like to be out in public, so it was like okay. this guy's house studio. It was like a legit yeah. studio, but it was like very inconspicuous. You wouldn't know it was there. We spent a week. We did, we did a few songs, and me and uh, Billy Mann, who I co-produced it with, we had done a few... Uh, just like simple track ideas for yeah. her to, for her to play, like to play for mm -hmm. her, and she she gravitated towards one of them, and uh, that was like the kind of the acoustic part of the I am here, and we finished the song. I wrote the song, and, and she she had ended up having a child, so she kind of delayed the whole album. Yeah, and uh, it was like eighteen months. Wow! Before I found out the song was going on the album, I thought nothing of it. I was like, okay, well. This is not going. Is that typical though in songwriting? Typical of making songs and never yeah, people and never then, hearing them yeah. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, literally, we write a song in here every day for the most part. Most people will never hear any of them. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy. I know. It's a little depressing, but. Have you ever thought of writing down how many songs you write and then at the end of the year just like calculating like, oh my gosh, I've hit. I do have a, like an iTunes playlist for like years, like 2018. Really? Yeah. So what's listening. the most that you've had last year that you wrote? <sighs> well, okay, let me put it this way. There's songs that are actually completed. Oh, okay. That go into that folder. Yeah, yeah. And that I think are good because there's also songs that I think are bad that are completed and songs that I think are bad that I don't even, it's not even yeah. worthwhile. So... Of the thongs, songs that I think are good, there was probably like 30. Wow. Imagine like yeah. 30 songs that I think are good versus, you know, doing maybe 200 to 250 sessions a year. It's crazy to think that, that oh, out of that many sessions, right. you have 30 songs that are your favorites. I that mean, I that think are good. Yeah, that are good. Yeah. yeah. But that doesn't count like the other ones. No. There's a lot of garbage. But and, you got you to gotta yeah. weed through the bad stuff to get the good. And you have a good ear, so you know. I mean, do you think that's a talent in itself? I think it's a, 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 it definitely is a talent. And I also think it's a learned skill, you know. I think there are some, some people out there that have a great ear for what's popular, you know. What's good for, I mean, radio. like <laughs> Exactly. Like guys like Max Martin, who've been yeah. around forever. He's a legendary songwriter. You know, still has been making hits since the 90s and is still relevant today, so... That's guys what, like that, and there's 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 not too many people like that. But you know, you have to have the ill, like the the skill to have basically the pulse of what like people are listening to. Yeah. So, what's the longest session you've ever been in? Oh my god! Like, if it's you're like gonna, in one yeah, day. Yeah, in one day. I mean, hours. I would say. Just a guess. I would say twelve hours. <sighs> wow. Yeah. It's like a full like I nursing mean, shift. <laughs> so I was like once it gets to a certain point, like eight hours, I, you start to get fatigued and like everything else is like, how do you know it's good? I yeah. can't tell. You're like it's perfect. Because <laughs> you always gotta like for me anyway, I have to come back to it the next day. Yeah. Like we you be in the moment and be like, this is awesome. Yeah. But there have been so many times where you come back the next day, it's like wow, this is not good. <laughs> it happens. It's a waste. Or it's like this is terrible in the moment. You come back and like, yeah, this is actually pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I definitely. I mean, writing is not easy, and it doesn't come easy to everybody. And especially when you're like, if you're writing a paper, for example, like you're gonna be staring at a screen all day. Like, yeah. You gotta wrap it up somehow. Right. And um, you. Would you ever consider being like the actual artist? I mean, I hate saying actual artist because I, I consider you an artist, sure, but yeah. like the performer. No, I mean, I was like back in the day, yeah. back in the day, like, I don't know, 10 years ago, I was in a band and yeah. I sang and played guitar and I would produce the songs and write the songs for my yeah. band. And uh, I, I would basically end up producing my friends' bands and I just kept going and going and I would tell my, my bandmates that, you know, we're still going to be in a band and we're, gonna, we're still going to do this, yeah. but that side ended up just taking over and I just, I never went back to the performing side. Now I see my friends touring and I'm like, I don't want to do that. It's, it's grueling work. And I just like being behind the scenes and doing my thing. And you get to go home and you're done and you stay in one spot. It's nice. Yeah. And um, my last question is, 
do you get to ever like you you you're like okay we're gonna work with this artist do you have to be in the room with that artist um, to write the song like if you're given a specific performer like Halsey do you have to be with her to write her music or can um, you just I think preferably yes because they can put their stamp on it I mean I'll write songs like writing songs with other songwriters where yeah. there are no artists in the room and you know at that point we don't at least for me I will not write with artists in mind we'll just write something that we enjoy writing or some, that we think is good and then maybe somebody else will pick it up mm -hmm. but if their artist is in the room it's nice because they can, it'll, it's their words that you can mm -hmm. put into the song and then they'll relate to it more and it's more likely for, they'll use it. Um, they can connect with you too, you yes. know? Yeah, that's always for me, I think it's much preferable if you can be in, in the room with the artist, so. And just kind of know, um, and, and you know, I feel like artists evolve too, so like maybe you worked with them one year, a few years go by, then you have to like kind of revisit that. Of course, yeah, people yeah. change, you know, people Sound, have Sound, everything. Yeah. Do you have a preference on what's like genre of music or do you think that you would ever go a different way in genre music than I, what I, you are right now? I think coming from the uh, the band background, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm definitely more in the alternative space, but okay. I, I listen to the top 40 music as well. Yeah. So it's just like that alternative band, top 40 area, yeah. somewhere in there. That's the conglomerate. That yeah, <laughs> that you mesh those two together, yeah. that's me. Yeah, that's, that's your genre. Right. Would you ever consider like maybe folk? I mean, country? Country maybe yeah. I don't I I'm not like an avid country listener. Yeah, but but I enjoy it. Yeah, I used to listen to Rascal Flatts back in the day all the time. Well, Even Florida go. Georgia Line I yeah. still love. So so yeah, maybe there could be a chance, sure. right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, thanks so much for hanging out with me. Yeah, thanks and, for coming. And um, I'm excited to see your what's up next. Awesome. Yeah, you're writing, right? Yeah. Always. Always. Is there something you can reveal that you're writing on right now? Like, I mean. Working on? Just working on everything. We have to like work just started working with Lovely for their next album. Um, yeah. There's another band I'm super excited about called The Aces. Okay. And then a bunch of other just something. Uh, endless, endless. Something every day. Yeah. Well thanks so much again. Sure.